Now look, there's a moment, there is a moment when the promises of God are no longer something we're looking forward to in the future. God has times, God has seasons. There are people that say America is finished. There are people that have pronounced doom, destruction, and death on us. There are people that believe we will deliberately dismantle every American institution so that we can rebuild it into something that doesn't have God, does not have Christianity, does not have it. The problem is you can defeat conservatives. You can defeat politicians. You can defeat religious people, but you cannot defeat God. You cannot defeat God. Like it or not, believe it or not, accept it or not, the hand of God is on the United States of America. I need some help right now. Am I preaching? Yeah. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And all the eyes of the people were on him like, what is he going to do next? You see, they'd already heard of the miracles. By this time, by Luke 4, Capernaum had almost had disease wiped out from him. Nearby, their neighbors, they heard the story. News didn't travel like it does now. Nobody could text each other. But Capernaum, which had been written off, whose children were denied the education that other children could get, they weren't even really allowed to worship in Jerusalem anymore because of the division of the two tribes and the other ten. But Isaiah said it was coming. He said the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them as the light shined. Now look, the northern tribes were deprived. Capernaum was the ground zero for being left out of everything. And Jesus went there first. He went to the lowest, the people that were most forgotten. Let me tell you something. When he stood there, it was in Capernaum that they tore the roof off of it and lowered the man and he was healed. It was in Capernaum that by the sea, he healed thousands and thousands of people. Now he went home to his hometown picked up the book and said, you know what I'm doing? I'm formally announcing to my family who I am. I'm not an illegitimate child. I'm not just the son of a carpenter. I am the anointed Messiah and son of God. Somebody help me right here. I'm preaching now. Today, Verse 21, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Of all the things that I must accomplish this week, the fear that is on me is that I will answer for God for every word that I preach, especially so close to Sacramento, where we are near what I consider to be the mountain of influence of political power in the state of California. This is where the miracle needs to start, is right there. This is where the transformation needs to come. This is where we deliver our children from perverted education. Right now. It is important for all of you in this room to know why Jesus came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because I have come to do these things. And he rattled off his list. The next thing that I want to say is that no one has been lied about more in human history than Jesus. There are more lies been told about him than anyone else. 
You can say Alexander the Great. You can name any world legendary historical figure. No one has been subjected to the lies that Christ has. And the most consistent generational evil that we commit is we hijack Christ to our own social movement. He doesn't belong to you, he belongs to God. His ideas don't belong to man, they belong, belong to God. And it's clear that when Christ came, you don't get to decide who he is. You don't get to decide what he's about. The LGBTQ community has hijacked Christ and said he would be tolerant and open-minded and he would accept everyone no matter what. You don't know what he said. He said he in the beginning made them male and female. Now look, he said it, I didn't say it. You can know without a doubt where Christ stands when he said, suffer the little children to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of God. No matter how you look at it, that's what he would say about a fetus, about a human person. You can't decide to tell Jesus what he believes. Let me tell you something. It's time that we speak up and stop letting the left hijack the words of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, Gavin Newsom is saying the most self-canceling term I've ever heard. He said, I'm going to make California a sanctuary for abortion. Now, wait a minute. How self-canceling is that? It makes as much sense. It's as logical a statement as saying, I'm going to put a screen door on a submarine. Sanctuary is when you protect life, not take it. And so he bought billboards across the United States, welcoming people to California to come and abort their child. And he put a verse of scripture on there, quoting Christ that says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, mama, I'm gonna tell you, the neighbor is the person that lives closest to you, right? So when you have a child in the womb, that's your neighbor. Come on, somebody. And it says to love your neighbor as yourself. So brother Gavin, you don't get to interpret Jesus Christ. You let him speak for himself. The Bible said he'd be the most lied about. He lied about Jesus.